Hello! My name's Ellie and I work at the Abrahams branch of the Omaha Public Library and today I'm going to talk with you a little bit about experiments and vocabulary. So when children engage in experiments with real items, they start to learn new words. And if we, as caregivers, make the connection between experiments or activities and books, it gives children the necessary context, language, and experience to start understanding scientific processes while also expanding their vocabulary. So let's look at an example together. So when you're thinking about experiments and books, you probably default to considering nonfiction books. But there's actually quite a bit of science in different picture books and other fiction books if you look for it and if you're a little bit creative. So let's look at Finding Spring, and this book is by Karen Berger. It follows a little bear who's trying to find signs of the changing of the seasons outside. So let's take a look at what he finds. The first time he goes out by himself, he finds dry leaves, he finds bare branches, and he finds a frozen stream. Do we think that that sounds like spring? Dry, crunchy leaves that you can jump in and an icy, frozen, cold stream. Do you think that sounds like spring? No, I don't think so either. What season do you think it sounds like? Hmm. Yeah, I think you're right. I think it sounds like winter too. And there's snowflakes on the page, so that's pretty wintry. Let's see what he finds a couple days later when he looks again. Oh wow, these pages look really different, huh? So he finds some blooming branches and bright green buds. And that stream that was frozen is flowing and rushing now. Hmm, what season do we think he found? I think so too. I think our bear friend found spring. So there's a lot of natural science in just those couple of pages. You could maybe predict how many flowers are out in your yard and then compare them to how many flowers are actually out there, go out and count together. And you could also maybe collect some dead leaves and some living leaves and compare them, see what the differences are. That's a scientific skill. But I think what would be really fun after reading this book is playing around and experimenting with some ice. For children this age, it's best to approach these experiences by playing with them rather than instructing them. And before you experiment, they need time to develop their ideas. So start with an unstructured activity. You can give children a bowl full of ice cubes to play with and provide a couple of real world tools that they could explore the ice cubes with. Ask them questions about what they're doing and what they're experiencing and noticing. If you notice your child getting bored, try to introduce a new part of the activity. I thought it'd be fun partway through to pour a little water in there and see how that changes everything. Asking questions about your child's experiences while they play with this ice will lead to making observations and predictions together. After you've explored and played together for a little while, make some suggestions for observations you might make together. Like, will ice melt more quickly in a dark bowl or a light bowl? What happens when you put dirt on ice? What about salt or sugar? Make some guesses and talk about why you're making the predictions that you are. When you do activities that connect to a book, you'll be supporting your child's curiosity and a lot of their early learning skills. You'll teach them new words, and especially when making predictions, you'll work on some trickier grammar together. Enjoy doing some experiments at home. Thank you so much for joining me today, and we look forward to seeing you in the branches again soon. Bye-bye!